Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all having a great day and let's just get right into it. Let's make a VI. You want to make a VI? Sound fun? Let's do it. Okay, I'm sure by the video title, you guys are probably wondering what a VI actually is. VI stands for Virtual Instrument and it's pretty self-explanatory actually. It's an instrument that's not exactly tangible. It's more of a computer program than an actual instrument really. And so the whole point of a virtual instrument is that you can basically use whatever sound you want and then you can take that sound and play it on something simple like this, which is your normal set of keys. But it's not because this actually doesn't make sound on its own. This is called a MIDI keyboard. If you guys would like a full explanation on what this is and why I use it and why a lot of people use it, then like the video. Hit the thumbs up button, and if enough of you hit that button, then I'll make a video explaining what this is. Okay, so with all that being said, and that explanation out of the way, one more thing is I'm actually doing this for a college project. I have a music technology class that I had to do a final project for, and this is one of them. And so I just kind of figured I would film the whole process of doing this while I'm at it. So, let's do it. Boom. Alright guys, let's get started. So. What am I doing for my virtual instrument? What is the sound that all of this is gonna be based around? The sound that all of this is gonna be based around is going to be the classic glass cup with water trick, you know? Like how if you fill a glass cup at different levels, it provides different pitches. And so basically the entire process of this is going to be, I am going to take this glass cup and I'm going to record this sound the same way in as many pitches as I can. Which, for this cup, I tested it beforehand, it should be, it's, it's like one note shy of an octave. And that drives me bonkers. <sighs> okay, so before I get started, started, I know, I keep, I keep pushing this back. I'm holding you guys in suspense. How does it feel? Do you feel suspenseful? Yeah, okay. So <laughs> we're gonna take a little bit of a tour of my tiny setup, which shouldn't take very long because it's a small setup. I don't have that much to do. So I have my glass that I'm going to be using. I have a bowl full of water with a little measuring cup so then I can fill the glass certain amounts of things. I have my phone on which I have downloaded an app that basically will tell me what pitch a thing is at. And so I can use that to make sure I'm getting the right pitches on my cup. And then over here, I have my lovely microphone. For anybody who's wondering specifically, this is a Samson CO1, I think. Yeah, it is. And so, great budget mic. You'll hear about that a lot if you look up budget microphones. And then I have my laptop, which is running my musical program, which I've gotten a few questions about it from you guys. This program is Ableton Live 10 light so not the full version of Ableton because if you've ever looked up music programs they're expensive music programs are pricey but if you guys want just a random plug here if you guys want a program like this that's totally free look up Cakewalk by BandLab it's pretty good might take a while to learn but it's pretty good and so there's that and then this box. This box is what allows me to run my microphone into my laptop. This is called an audio interface, which I don't know how to explain it, except it's a magical silver box that lets you do things. Just kidding. I can probably explain it a little better than that. I'm sorry. So an audio interface is basically what allows you to run microphones and other instruments into your computer. So I have my microphone cable running into the back of the audio interface and then I have my audio interface is on this cable running into my laptop. And the whole point, the whole reason you want to have an audio interface, a good reason to use one, is because it reduces some of the background noise you get from recordings. I think. I, I think. And the other reason is it generally provides a higher quality sound into your program. So, yeah. But 
be warned, these things aren't cheap either. None of this is cheap. Music stuff is expensive, I hate it. Okay, let's get started. That's all there is to it. All right, so I've finished uh, getting samples for eight different notes. The reason I've stopped at eight is because, as I said before, this is the Ableton Live Lite. So it's not the fully featured version of Ableton, which also means that it has a track limit of eight. I can only have eight different tracks on a project at a time. And so I'm just gonna get these all figured out and then exported out of here before I start on the next set of eight and then that should probably cover it I think I'll be done after that point so yeah Okay guys, I finally got all my samples done. It honestly did not take me as long as I thought it would, but it was kind of tedious. So I'm tired now, which might also be because it's like midnight here. So I think I'm gonna call it a night for now and I will show you guys how I'm going to turn this into a VI tomorrow and show you the program that I used to do that. And so yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay guys, it's the next day. Um, I got my sleep, I think, mostly. And so now I'm just sitting at the table with my laptop and I'm going to show you how I am going to put this into a thing that makes a virtual instrument. So yeah, let's get started. All right, so the program I'm using to make my virtual instrument is one I found out about through my college class. It's called H-I-S-E. Not to be confused with how it should have ended, this is a different thing. This is, um, I don't really know how to explain it. I get the feeling this program can do a lot of things, but I think it's mo mostly used for creating a virtual instrument. And yeah, it's a free program, so that's cool. I didn't have to pay for it. And so I guess I'll get started. So it's pretty simple on this. Uh, screen I have what's called a sampler and what a sampler is is it's basically just a program that you put samples into and you line them up with different keys on the keyboard and then you can play them on a keyboard and it'll make the sound pretty simple and so I'm gonna start with my sample from A and then I'm going to stick it on why is this two bars wide that's not right oh there it goes and move this, please. 
Please move. No. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> Things are hard. Okay. That note. And then when I hit the A, it makes the lovely little sample sound of my glass being hit. And then I shall put the A sharp or the B flat on the next key, which is what's known as a half step up. And now I have doop, doop. And then I can put the C. No, I just want this one. There's probably a faster way to be doing this. Oh wait, I don't want C. No, I'm getting myself confused. I need B. That one. And I can put B. Turn it out. This is now I need C and then C sharp and then D and then D sharp. I think I would be able to just like drag, oh, like be able to like select all of these and drag them in, but A. There's a couple reasons why I don't think I can do that. First being is that um, for some reason in my program for like a computer if it has a pound sign next to the note it puts that as alphabetically first than the other thing without pound sign so all my notes are out of order and then on top of that it's mixed in with a bunch of these little like Ableton specific sound files. I guess they're not even sound files, but they're just like clip settings that go into Ableton, so those wouldn't be compatible with dragging them through, so I guess I could do, oh, no, I guess I can't do that kind of thing. Ah, there we go, I can do that kind of thing, but like I said, that won't really work because if I just drag, the, drag those in, they would stay in that order, and I can't do that because my notes are all out of order, so I have to do this one by one and it's kind of annoying but it is what it is what am I on D sharp doop -a doop -a. that's pretty nice I'm loving this and then E F. No, bomb it. Got that in. And F sharp. We're almost done. And G. And then G sharp. And that's all the notes I have, which is literally one little shy of an octave. So if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say an octave, I guess I can explain it now because I have this nice little set of piano keys right here. So an octave is basically, um, it's essentially from, I think it's eight notes, which is why it's called an octave. But it's, so this note, this pitch right here, I don't have a note on here to show you, but it is, this pitch would be the same note. So this is an A and this is also an A. So an octave is just the space in between the same note because the musical alphabet goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then it stops. It stops at G and then it just keeps going. So this note is a C and then C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, over and over again, all the way up the piano. So an octave is simply the space between the two of the same notes. So this is an A and this is also an A. So the space between this is an octave. So I say I'm just shy of an octave because my notes, my samples span from this A all the way up to this note, which is a G sharp. So if I had one more note, then I would have this full octave. Ta-da! So, super exciting. I guess 
if you're into this kind of stuff. I know I am. But like, I guess some people would argue that I do have the full octave since I have this pitch right here. I don't really need this one. So I do have one of every pitch that you would find within this space. So, I guess that's it. I don't really know how to do anything else with this at this given time. I know there's a lot more stuff you can do with this program. You can like actually completely deck out your little virtual instrument. I know that there's this little thing, this little menu, which lets you create like a user interface for your virtual instrument. I haven't really played around with that yet. And I know you can add like knobs and stuff to change the parameters of your instrument. But I don't know how to do that either, so I'm going to try to meet with my teacher today and see if he can teach me how to do some of that stuff. But so, that's it. That's all I got. So, yeah, and then I think I just need to click this little export button and then I can export it as a VST, which is a virtual instrument plugin. It's just a type of file. And I'm all done. So, of course, since I'm like a musical person in a musical channel, I can't just like not make a song out of the virtual instrument I just created, right? Right? So I think my real question is, is do I do an original song or do I do a cover using this instrument? Let me know what you guys think, but there will be a video eventually following up after this one with a song that I made out of this virtual instrument that I just created. So, yeah, that's all. Like if you enjoyed the video, give it a nice big thumbs up. Comment any questions you might have. I will try to look at them. I know I'm not the best at looking at comments, but I will try. I will do my best. And make sure you hit that subscribe button. And I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you later. Bye. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. I don't know what to say. I suck at intros. Mm, cut. <laughs> so VI stands for virtual instrument. Actually, I realized that since the camera mirrors the footage after I take it, I need to do my right hand first. Or else the words are gonna be backwards. Dang it. So I'm pretty sure you're probably wondering from the video title what a virtual in- I just said it. I just said it. That's a blooper. That's going. I had to, I have to record this sound as like as identically and that's going in the bloopers I can't think of bleh. words are hard <laughs> <laughs> And yeah so yeah <laughs>